No, oh, I shouldn't do that, huh? Carly Webster Menchie. <laughs> I tried I mean, so what hard. She's known for now. I right? tried so hard. <laughs> Carly Webster. That is uh, welcome. Welcome back to KHTS, Carly Webster from oh, The Voice, you. and that is your uh, signature song uh, from yes. The Voice. I think everybody knows that, right? Yeah. Um, and I tried to sing it and I promised to never, ever, ever do that again. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was beautiful. <laughs> Menji, Menji and I are here this morning to find out what's been going on. We want to hear about your holidays. We also want to hear about something that happened recently. That's just over the top. Fantastic. But first of all, for the listeners who have uh, never heard, cause you've been here a couple of times, we've interviewed you while you were actually doing the voice before you, you know, we went into the finals and all of that. We know the story of about you and Carly Simon, legend Carly Simon. But let's just refresh in case uh, our listeners don't exactly know what the bridge. Build. A big old recap. If yes, you will. Build, build the bridge okay. about Last Carly Simon. Time on Carly Webster. <laughs> okay, I'll go quickly. No, um, no, 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 no. Take your time. I auditioned for The Voice. Mm-hmm. I made it to the blind auditions. I was able to sing Carly Simon's You're So Vain for my blind audition, um, which turned the chairs of Adam Levine and Miley Cyrus. Almost instantaneously. <laughs> I just want to add that note there. <laughs> um, I decided to pick Miley Cyrus as my coach, and I had a run with her for a couple rounds and made it to the top 24. Miley picked me as her comeback artist. And after Carly Simon heard me sing her song, she sent me a message on Twitter, actually. Whoa. Yeah. The she, DMs. She, she slid into my DMs to say, hey, I really liked your version. I, I want to be your coach, too. If Miley Cyrus wouldn't mind, it's like, uh... I don't care if she minds. I don't mind. Now, Carly, let me just, because I know we've all had that experience of someone really cool liking our tweet or or whatever, yeah. but you got a direct message. Were you looking at your phone going, wait a minute, someone is completely putting me on here. Someone's oh. joking with me. This isn't real. Absolutely. I mean, what was going through your mind? My, my first response was, is this real life? And she responded saying, yes, this is real I would love for you to come to Martha's Vineyard, which is where she lives in Massachusetts. And I still didn't really believe it. I was like, okay, this is either someone playing a joke on me or this could really be her, but the chances of that are super slim. It was like her verified page, but for some reason I still didn't believe it. And so I just randomly just put my phone number in there and it's, and just realize like, okay, I'm either going to get a call from some weirdo who's trying to act like they're Carly Simon or I'll get a call from her. And a couple days later, I get a call on my phone that said from Massachusetts. And I kind of had this like gut instinct, like, oh my goodness, this could be it. This is it. And so I answer the phone and, and immediately when she said, hello, I knew it was her. And she said, this is Carly. And I said, Hi, Carly. Like it was, it was absolutely insane. I was shaking. You were named after Carly Simon. Yes. So this is all just an amazing, uh, I mean, I I can't even imagine what's going on in your head when you're getting, you know, a call from her, first of all, the message, then the call from her. And then what happens? So do you just, you get on a plane and what happens? <laughs> well, that's basically what happened. Um, her and my mom communicate through email. They're actually like good friends now, which is pretty crazy to think right. about. Okay, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we we were able to fly out. I was able to play a show out in, in Massachusetts with one of the fellow past contestants, Mariah Formica. And it was a lot of fun. It was a little Christmas show. So we were able to make use of the trip. It was a vacation. It was, we had a show and then we went out to Martha's Vineyard and um, visited her for the day. And it was the most magical experience ever. It was crazy. We have pictures of you behind the piano. Did you get to sing with Carly? I did. Um, So we, 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 I was nervous about us like just hitting it off right off the bat. Um, So I I didn't know like, what are we going to talk about? Like what's going to happen? But conversation just like started. She was so the easiest easy. person oh, to talk to. Absolutely. Right? I felt like she was like my friend for years when, when I had first met her. Um, so that was incredible. And then she wanted to sing with me. And so her and her son, who is also an incredible artist, which is also James Taylor's son. So you would expect him to be pretty great. I mean, yeah. Okay. Just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I got to sing You're So Vain with her, which was incredible. Our voices like 
they were meant to be, <laughs> we were meant to be singing together. It sounded so crazy cool. And then she wanted to hear my original music. And so that's when we went into her music room with her pianos, pianos, plural. Um, and, um, she wanted me to play my, some of my own music and I did, and she loved it. And she actually hopped on one of my own songs and started singing it with me because she was able to catch on so quickly. And, oh my gosh, it was, it was so now, insane. Sitting down in front of the piano in front of one of your like heroes. Yeah. You must be nervous, right? Oh, absolutely. I, one of the songs I was playing, I played all the wrong chords, but like just kept going with it. It was like, maybe she won't notice, but I think she noticed. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I couldn't, I can't even sing in front of you uh, as, as demonstrated a couple of minutes ago. So I can't even imagine what it was like to just, you know, what Menji said, like, just, you know, you're, you're doing your thing and you've, you've pretty much, you've been in front of the cameras now and you know, you've, you've sung for Miley and, and the whole team there, you had Blake and you had, you know, yeah. and so I'm sure some of the nerves have, you know, it's calmed down a little bit cause you're used to that. You're used to being in the spotlight, but then being in front of your hero and right. someone that you, uh, you know, emanated the, your music and, and I couldn't even imagine what was going through your mind. Do you even remember sometimes when I'm in a situation like that, I don't even remember parts of it because I'm so blown away. Right. I mean, do you, are there blanks, you know, spaces of time that you go, what exactly happened there? Actually, no. Um, this was one of the opportunities that I really had to take some time beforehand and say, I need to remember every single bit of this because this is once in a lifetime, which I found out might not be um, because she's so kind and generous. Um, but I... I really wanted to remember every single bit of it. So I really, I just took a moment of just quiet and peace and said, this is okay. She's just a normal person and I can, I, I need to make the most of this. So even though I was nervous, I had to play my songs for her because she asked and I, there was no way I was going to pass up on any opportunity because she is my hero. Because, yeah. yeah. You, good for you. I'm so proud of you. Carly, can you stick around? We're going to do a little bit of a break here. We're going to talk about traffic. I know that Menji and I are anxious to find out about your holidays, what you have coming up. This and morning is Carly Webster from The Voice. You may remember she sang You're So Vain. She got on Miley's team. She did really well. She was brought back because they loved her so much. And we love her. She's from the SCV. And we're so proud to have you in studio. Good morning Thank again, Carly. You. Good morning. Co-hosting with me on this interview is Menji. Hi. Menji has done so many pieces on Carly. He's our video guy yes. and uh, you've done many an interview and video pieces for Carly. Uh, if you have, we are live streaming on Facebook. So if you have any questions for Carly, please feel free. We're going to be talking to her for the next five to seven minutes. And uh, we have questions though. First of all, how was your <laughs> holiday? Oh, it was great. It was so nice. I mean, I've, I spent so much time away from my family with the show and um, so it was so nice to see everyone again and to be able to reconnect and to kind of just it's it's nice to take a moment away from all of the craziness of the show too just because like it is so crazy and it's so amazing but it's also nice to just be with family and when you're with family it's like None of the craziness like ever happened, which is kind of nice for a moment. It's it nice to kind of keeps you grounded. A yeah. Little bit. So I, I really enjoyed I needed it. I needed the family time. So it was great. Do we have big plans mm -hmm. for the new year? Or, or oh, let's start with man. New Year's Eve. Big new party, Year's New Eve. Year, big plans? What? I actually don't do anything too crazy on New Year's Eve. I, I hang out with some of my closest friends. We go bowling and it's a lot of fun. Awesome. It's what we've done every year and it's my favorite. Tradition. Bowling tradition. Yeah. I new, like it. Yeah, New yeah. Year's Eve bowling tradition. I'm terrible at bowling, so that makes it even more fun. It does. Oh, no. <laughs> do you put the bumpers up? I should, <laughs> but happen. I don't. <laughs> Uh, Carly Webster's in studio. You may remember her from The Voice, and we are so proud. She's from Canyon High. Yes. And you went, uh, you started to go, I'm going to repeat this story because I thought, I think it's so fascinating. And I love the fact that your mom is so supportive of you and kind of pushed you to actually get on The Voice. Um, uh, you started uh, at USC? I actually started at Oregon State and then ended up at USC, um, but I was there for like a year. So mm -hmm. And so, so you're, you're doing your studies yes. and the auditions come around. And what happens this last time? So she, my mom, my mom really wanted me to audition multiple times. Every time that one of the open call auditions would pop up, she would say, okay, Carly, it's time. Um, but I was always just so nervous of the failure because I'd experienced so much failure with my singing um, in the past. And I was expecting that to happen again. But at the time, just the last one, um, 
I kind of realized, well, I've really got nothing to lose. Either they'll like me or they won't. So it's really not that bad. Um, and so I went and it ended up being such an incredible experience and got me to where I am now, which is absolutely insane. Now, I want to know something here. You are going to USC. Yes. Um, and I know the music program over there at <laughs> USC is like prestigious one of the hardest schools to get into. You got to audition. You got to do all of this crazy stuff to get into it. Um, so obviously you have to be really good to get in and you got in. Oh, thank what, you. What what was uh, what 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 was really keeping you back? If you're, you're like, I was able to get into this prestigious school. What what really was like mm. holding you back from from doing the the voice audition? Well, I've always been very work oriented and school oriented and I I need to I need to be working as much as I can and I need to be doing well in school. And so the idea of setting any of that aside for my voice um was completely like it wasn't really acceptable in my mind even though my parents would tell me like you need to pursue music, you can quit school, pursue music. Um but in my head that was never really an option. So I I was afraid of that failure um, just because when it came to performing, that's when I experienced failure. I've always done well in school. I've always done well in music theory and all of that kind of stuff that was really important into getting into the USC School of Music. Um, but the idea of pushing that all away for an opportunity that could go bad um, was something that I was really afraid of. Um, but I'm very thankful that. Well, it's really personal. Yeah. I mean, yes. you're, you're really, you're really, it's really getting personal. Like you mm -hmm. said, you've always been a good student. And so kind of continuing your studies, we're going to put studies in quotes because it kind of melted into the music program. Right. So you kind of put those together, you know, you've always been a good student, but this is, this was you out on the stage. It's really, really yes. personal. And I can see where you could shy away from that, but we're so glad and, and, you know, big, big kudos to your parents for supporting you mm -hmm. because that's not the usual... You know, uh, I, I'm a parent myself and I know a lot of my daughter's friends would, nope, you're going to college. Mm -hmm. You have that dream. You're going to have to put it aside. it's a creative sort Especially, of major. It's yes. like, right. whoa, whoa, is there even money in this? And right. that's where I think the, the real inspirational part comes. Uh, um, in our past interviews, you mentioned you were working at Starbucks yeah. and you're like, I got to do Starbucks. I got to do school. Um, but it was finally taking that leap of just, right. I'm going to try and do this head first. And I think that's what a lot of people kind of stop themselves. You know, mm -hmm. this is not safe. I don't know what right. I'm going to do if I don't have a job. And we're so glad you did because we are oh, so incredibly proud too. of you. <laughs> we are so incredibly proud of you. Do you have any concerts or anything coming up that we can tell people? About? I actually do this Saturday um, at the local. Uh, it's the new little pub that we have in Stevenson Ranch. It's over by the Bebmo in that little area in Stevenson Ranch. I will be playing an acoustic show and the whole theme of of the night is kind of like me just sharing my heart uh, and playing the songs that I love to listen to and the songs that have inspired me and I'll have my guitarist with me and he's going to sing a couple songs and Carly, it's be a lot of fun. Carly, if our listeners want to go, uh, do you have all this information on your website? It is on my Facebook page. I do need to get it on them. I think it is on my website actually. So carlywebstermusic.com. And Carly's with a K. Carly's with a K mm -hmm. and an I. Um, and it's at eight, eight o'clock, the local on Saturday. So you want, Fantastic. you want to be there. Go, I do want to be Carly there. Live. You, you want to hear her voice live. We you, don't, you don't want to keep the YouTube videos. We, <laughs> Carly, it's been such a pleasure. You know, the door is always open for your you know return. Oh, You're always welcome you. here. We are so incredibly proud of you and so happy for you, but it's well-deserved. You're a huge talent. And this is the, not the last time we are going to uh, hear from Carly Webster. That's for sure. I know Ooh. there is more to come. Am I right, Menj? There is. All I'm right. hoping maybe with even Carly Simon. Yeah. Maybe. Fingers crossed. She Let's that. <laughs> Let's check in with news. We'll be right back.